previously on my microscope controller project uh, I was showing you this this board I made a front panel screw on it and everything uh, on the CNC machine and lots of um, acrylic um, put it on the side of the um, of the camera and just, just decided it was way too wide um, so uh, going back a little bit back to the drawing board and I've came up with this one this is a replacement as you can see a little bit narrower I think it could be more I'd like to make it again but a bit more narrow but I can't be I kind of run out of time so this one's got got acrylic front panel see um, with holes for the buttons I didn't cut a hole before I had it cut a hole for the screen but obviously it was clear acrylic so it's unnecessary um, got my rotary encoder here my first design had the um, uh, GPIO chip on the front panels but on this one uh, that's I've moved that onto the back panel and then used these two risers to transfer the data so this side of the chip is for the LEDs and this side is for the buttons um, that controls uh, the rotary that's for the rotary and con con rotary encoder and the two buttons this connector down here carries the uh, I I, the I2C to the OLED and as well as power gener generally um, and this is the Team Z the USB input on the Team Z um, can't see but that, that, that actually, I've soldered that onto the pads on the underside allow, me, allow you to connect wires direct to the USB uh, so this can goes out I was going to have the connectors going on to out the side, but then I just realised that it just make more width down here. So I've bodged the connectors and glued uh, a couple of connectors. So this is the USB, and this is the power connector. Um, each of these buttons uh, has a little bit of a riser built into it, so that uh, it was level with the uh, rotary encoder. Um, I could have actually put it a few further down, but that's the way it turned out. So it all connects together like so, quite neatly, I think. And I've made a box. Thank you. 
that slides in. Um, the lid sort of like you have to. Everything sort of connect. You connect everything up. I've used captive nuts in these holes here for the screws. The um, the power supply for this runs off a, a USB connector. Um, I didn't want to because this camera doesn't come with any manuals or any kind of technical information at all whatsoever um, I didn't didn't want to run it run this device this, this takes about 30 million 30 to 40 milliamps um, when it's running uh, but I didn't want to run it off the camera power supply uh, obviously the mouse controller has 5 volts on it uh, but I've no idea how this camera will be able to supply those voltages. I don't want to upset the camera. The camera also appears to take power from the HDMI, which I didn't realise was a thing. Um, so with everything all connected up, I'll now put it, I'll put it now back onto the camera, uh, and I'll I'll show you how it's all working and everything. Right, now I've got my box attached, so I'll just plug it in. Plug in the power, it boots up. Not catch anything. And it goes straight into a manual focus um, setting. Uh, so I've got my thing, got my option buttons around here. Um, click, 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 click. That's quite nice. So I can manual focus up there and then do the usual rotate it out to focus <laughs> and things like that um, and then click again uh, I can click select click focus click that and it will automatically go back into focus um, I can select different click focus click focus again that is Set manual focus. The, the, what that button does, it just turns the man turns it into manual focus mode. So it should turn stays into a fixed focus. Uh, so I'm gonna change distances. It goes all right. But then I can I can just simply click focus, and it'll go back into focus on the screen again. Uh, there's also auto focus mode, so I can just click it, and it'll go. We're now going to auto focus mode. The buttons are sp surprisingly useful um that's kind of it really it, i've tried tried to keep it as simple as possible what it's supposed to do i don't have to go through layers of menus or strange things like that the software is more or less the same as it was before um the only real difference is that I've put in the read roads, I've replaced the um, absolute encoder with some rotary encoder code, which I think is kind of universal. Rotary encoders work, uh, it's called a grey encoder. Um, essentially, it's reading both, both it's reading, it's, imagine two buttons and you're pressing the buttons in sequence um, if button A is ahead of button B then you're uh, then you're going in a clockwise direction or if button B is ahead of button A then you're rotating in a anti-clockwise direction the device this does mostly what I want I think I'd like to make it a little bit thinner uh, I'd have to move this man if I move the screen down a bit um I've got room down here for more for more space or even up here. Uh but if I move the screen down a bit, uh I'll be able to move the box in because these anchor points would then be uh could then come in. So I'd probably knock about a centimetre off I think. Um That'd be nice, make it thinner. Um, I've not got a use for this button. I might 
if I if I ever get around to to doing this again, I'd probably have a, a I've got some soft power uh, module type things which I can use um, to provide little. I don't think the screen needs to be on all the time. Uh, a couple of little cha yes, a couple of little changes would be to have the screen go off after a sh short period. I don't. Um, this no LED screen. I don't know if these burn in or not. Uh, probably do. Um, I think that's it. Thank you.